comprar algo. What's up, everybody? Oh, shoot. Spanish. Podemos... Oh, Spanish. Oh. Welcome to Travel and Talk Tuesday. Kind of, sort of, sort of, kind of. Because this ain't really going to be about me. I'm just talking to y'all going to work and giving y'all a video because... You know, I'm trying to get back into the routine. Trying to get back into the routine. What's good? Uh, all right, so I'm leaving my neighborhood. I keep forgetting my daughter say, don't do it until you get out the neighborhood, but fuck it, I'm doing it. Let's do it. Let's do it till you're satisfied. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hopefully, it's stable. And hopefully, y'all can hear me. It's my last two videos for Handmade Sale was very low my volume was very low i'm thinking that my mic wasn't attached my mic is never attached here in the car so i'm always really talking louder so that y'all can hear the recording man they put these goddamn speed bumps we had some speed bumps installed in our neighborhood right yeah but been five speed bumps one on each corner <laughs> to try to slow down the speed of traffic because we ain't got no for real stop signs in our neighborhood Baby, they put all four of the spot, all five of the speed bumps on the same street, on the same street. So everybody coming down that street, slow as a bug, and we all driving around the speed bumps to get out the neighborhood. So now the two other streets that ain't got speed bumps got heavy traffic that like never before. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. I was like, now nah, they're supposed to be on every corner, like you know. No, every corner is not a stop sign. They were supposed to be a speed bump, but they put them all on one street and now they stuck with them child they stuck with them because i don't think that the person with the hoa even uh was aware Ooh, what you doing i don't think the person with the hoa was aware that uh the pre hoa president hold on hold on, hold on. <laughs> i don't think the hoa president was aware until like about five days later you know, after the, the tar done set, the, the paint thing, things been painted. Ain't nothing you can do about them now. I don't think you're going to go out there and make them purposely turn back up. But they ain't going to come out and put them in the right place. It costs a lot of money. Our HOA is already going up, and I've only been here in three weeks. Okay, so anywho. All thing that's going on in my life is my mommy is coming today. It's Valentine's Day. Happy day to all the lovers in the world. I like Valentine's Day. If you don't like it, I don't care. Okay. Um, tomorrow is Side Chick Day. That's when all the Valentine's Day candy go on sale. But because I'm living a healthier lifestyle, I'm trying to anyway, I won't be out buying Valentine's Day candy like I normally do. Because I like to get the half-price food, you know. So I'm going to have to wait until Halloween because I'm buying it at Halloween. Damn it, I don't give a doggone what y'all say. Um, so... I went and what did I do? I don't know what I did. My mama's coming today. And those of y'all who know our story, y'all know why this is a, a joyous moment for me that she coming and I feel good about it, right? She is trying to move back to Orlando. She is not moving with me. I hope we got that clear and understood. And I hope that she don't think that she gonna come here and try to manipulate the situation and stay with me again, cause it ain't finna fucking happen. Okay. Um, but the place that I found for her to uh, rent, we gonna go check that out. I'm gonna call the lady up today, call her, say we coming up with tomorrow, do her application process or whatever. And hopefully they'll have her into a place by May. Cause that's what she wanted to move by May anyway. Plus where she living at now, the girl who she's staying with is about to move out of state to a, a whole nother state. So she damn sure got to move by bay. Um, but like I said, they going to be with me. But I do have a co-worker. I don't know if it's a good thing because they act just a fucking like they will fight. They would fight. And then I have to kick my co-worker ass for trying to fight my mama. I don't know if that's a good idea to suggest that. I don't know, then again, they may get it fucking long because they act just alike. But my, well, my co-worker is looking for a, a roommate right now. She was like, no, she could rent with us until she actually get a place. I already know how that's going to go because I know me and that girl, she cool with me. You know what I'm saying? But me and her go at it. We go, and we go at it like me and my mama used to do. Me and the girl do. 
and then we go back and say, hey, you're hey, the next day, you know, that type of situation. And since I don't have, like, any real history with this chick, it ain't like it's uh, something that, you know, I, I could draw from the past and having hurt emotions and hurt feelings and grudges from the past and holding on to like I do, you know, in, in with family bonds. But anywho, that's it. She'll be here today at 7 p.m. And lastly, for myself, the only other thing is to uh, soul ties. I am reviewing soul ties. I told y'all it's coming out today, Valentine's Day. I posted up, I shared the first uh, episode on, on the community board for y'all to watch. Some of y'all have already watched it. Some of y'all said y'all can't wait to have this discussion. I seen the opening 30 seconds. I already got a lot to say about the opening 30 seconds, y'all. <laughs> I already got a lot to say. But yeah, so I think I'm gonna really like this. Uh, and we did get word from one of the people uh, that works with the show um, that there is gonna be a season two. It's a little birdie toe, little bird. So I'm, I'm, I'm singing like a parrot to y'all. The parrot sing or is the parakeets? One of them, they talk too doggone much and tell everybody information. It's one of them. Okay, so yeah, that's all I got for y'all as far as my life is concerned. I got a bed. Y'all see that? I got a bed, child. Woo! I'm finally up off of that floor. Finally up off of that floor. And the bed is so effing amazing. Even if you ain't in the market to go buy a bed, go down to Ashley Furniture. I don't know why we got to say this. This video is not sponsored. <laughs> but we got to say that so YouTube won't be like tripping whatever. Anywho, go down to uh, Ashley Furniture in, in your local area and find a bed called The Groove. Just lay on it. Just lay on it. They got two types of mattresses. I think one is soft and one is firm. They don't have the medium firm. I need the medium firm because of how I sleep. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my back. I sleep on my stomach. I sleep everywhere, right? Um, but I have back issues, so if some people with back issues need a more firmer bed, but we don't need it too firm, which so we need a medium firm. Okay, they didn't have it, so I ended up having to get the firm because it's better than my back to get this off. <sighs> when I tell you, heaven must feel like this, it must feel like this. I'm telling you, that bed mattress is everything now i bought the mattress when we first got into the house i just didn't have a bed to put it on so i haven't slept on mine but i got keena the same mattress and i did get to lay on hers a couple times like sometimes i just go in her room and crawl, crawl up in her bed baby that mattress is everything oh everything just i've been sleeping through the night um i've been getting up like at least two hours earlier than normal but i have been waking up around 1 a.m and i just be up tossing and turning I woke up today at 4.30, which is actually not bad because I was supposed to get up at 5 so I could work out before I go to work. And I didn't do the workout. I'm going to tell you that right now. I went back to sleep because that bed feel like heaven. Okay. Anywho. Oh, I don't know if that's a good thing to feel like heaven. Because when you're in heaven, you're dead. I don't want to be dead. Oh, clouds. Clouds must feel like this. It must feel like this. I don't want the... <laughs> I don't want to go to heaven yet. Not yet. Not yet. Anywho. So, child. Did y'all see the Super Bowl? For, me, did y'all see Rihanna? Okay. All the hateration going on. Talking about it was lackluster. It was boring. Compared to what? Her previous performances? Whatever. Okay. Check this out. My girl came out on stage, pregnant than the motherfuckers, right? And everybody in the world is like, y'all see what I said? You know, in the age of body shaming and pregnant shaming and this, that, the third, people don't want to ask if a woman who just had baby is pregnant because it's, we call her fat. Whatever, no, motherfucker, we want to know if she's pregnant. That's what we want to know. Now, me, personally, I never thought that I was a stand of somebody other than Prince and Tupac and Alan Allison. And then he crashes, baby. Oh, Jesus. Okay, anywho. 
I never thought that I was really like a stand stand, but I think I stand Rihanna. I love her business sense. First and foremost, I love her business sense over anything that she does. Anything that she does, I love her business sense. And then um, her music is more relatable for me. And then her personality is next. It's out. You know how I break them down. I ain't too fond of ASAP Rock. Her both I ain't too fond of that. So when um I heard they had got back together, I was like, mm, whatever. And, and he has he has his issues. It's, it's his own. But she attracted to that. So I was like, mm, but she's had bad choices in being in my opinion. Anyway, so anywho, I was excited that she was pregnant again. I said, oh my god, my girl pregnant. She pregnant again. We haven't even really seen her interact with her first baby, who's only nine months old, ten months old, nine or ten months old, and now she's about to give birth again. She looked like she was about four or five months pregnant. That's what she looked like she was. Child, Rihanna came out and did what she was supposed to do. That's for me, okay? Everybody like, well, she, I don't care if she pregnant. Beyonce performed pregnant and she turned upside down on her head. Her stupid ass fault. That's what I say. I said it when she did it. Why the fuck are you flipping upside down, goddamn, pregnant like that? I know it can be done, but fucking why? Why do it? Who you trying to prove a point to? Fuck. She ain't got to Rihanna and have to prove shit to nobody, okay? To nobody. She ain't need all the motherfucking theatrics. She had all the fifty thousand dollars dances out there. She ain't need nothing else. She had the Sonic Hedgehog stages floating up and down, you know. Baby, I was so worried about them damn platforms. I was like, especially once I realized she was pregnant. I was like, don't be putting her up in the air like that. And then the motherfucker something go wrong and the wire break and shit. And then she be, oh, uh, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I was nervous. I was nervous. But she came out there. She looked good. She looked good. That red was popping, baby. Pop, 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 pop. That red was popping. Okay. The outfit, Kena loved it. I hated that brassiere, that that latex brassiere that she had over the rest of the. Uh, I hated that shit. Her hair, um, it was cute. You know, Rihanna got a forehead. Let's be honest, Rihanna got a forehead like a big dog. But and she was cute. She was cute. She was still. She can give you sexy without being slutty. Even though we know Rihanna can be slutty, which she want to be. She was giving you cues, she was giving you classes, she was giving you, and she was giving you vocals. You see, her vocals improved. Rihanna's vocals improved. Well, I ain't gonna say her vocals improved. Her vocals have changed slightly. Um, lots of times when you hear Rihanna sing, you can hear the heavy influence of her native tongue. And I like that personally, but in on this stage right here, she had a lot more clarity in the in the in how she delivered the performance. Uh, even when she did, wow, wow, wow. You could understand the words better. When that song first came out, people didn't know what the fuck Rihanna was saying. People who didn't understand her dialect. Didn't understand what she was saying. But people got it this time. They work, 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 work. People understood the words. So I think she gave a lot more clarity. And her tone, she brought it down an octave. Um... She wasn't doing too much moving. Y'all know Rihanna don't do too much moving anyway. She could wind her motherfucking waistline. She could twerk her ass off. But Rihanna ain't never been no real uh, dancer. You know, she gets in there with the rest of the performers and do what she need to do. But she ain't never been no... She she has never been an acrobat as far as dances is concerned. She don't need to be. She don't need to be for me. Um, So, you know, it's a whole bunch of hate out there. I'll uh, compare to her about what she did. I got mad at Alicia Keys when she crawled her pregnant ass across the piano. Okay? When Cardi was out there, you know, and I, I've danced pregnant. You can dance pregnant. But you don't have to. That's the thing. She ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. Y'all asked her to do the uh, Super Bowl performance, and she did it. She said, you lucky she didn't cancel on your ass? Shit. <laughs> so... What happened? She heard. It's been seven god doggone years since we seen Rihanna perform live. And I was here happy for it. I was so happy for it, child. My baby, my daughter was turning the hell up. I put like a little small clip of her dancing on Instagram. 
was she was turning the hell up. That's how we was. That's how happy we were doing the performance. Now, like I said, it's a whole bunch of people doing think pieces and shit about the damn performance. This, then, the third. There is one out there that kind of made me say, "Damn, maybe you're right." Okay, we already know that her performance was um, a pregnancy announcement. We're aware of that at this particular time. She came out. I did not realize how many times she showcased the belly and rubbed the belly and then, you know, structured the belly. I didn't notice how many times she did it until I watched it back the second or the third time. I don't see it the three times. I didn't realize how many times she did that. But I did catch it on the first time. I was like, oh, yeah. Look at her. She did the belly and she was uh, singing a, a lyric in a song that seemed like it could be very relatable. I'm so ha um, happy you're alive. And, you know, yeah, I was like, okay, baby, it's a baby. So one of the persons said that the entire performance itself was the announcement. Not necessarily just her showing the baby, but the whole staging and dancing. You know, Rihanna is dressed in all this red. Signifies a woman's menstrual cycle. You know they got deep on these thick pieces, right? And all of her male dancers, she didn't have one female dance on the stage. All of her male dancers were dressed in white. And they were penetrating her at certain points during the song. They all would rush at her from both sides. You know what I'm saying? They circled around her. I think at the end, they all came towards her uh, and then circled around her again. They basically were saying that the little white dance, the dances in the white was all the spermies. It was all the spermies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? When you look at that, it's very possible. Like even with the Sonic the Hedgehog platforms going up and down, every time she went up, they chased, they rose up with her. Like they was chasing her. And then she would come back down away from them. Like, oh, no, nah, this one did. I had to get pregnant that time. So they came back down. And then they circled around her again. You know what I'm saying? You know, that person might have a point. They may have a point. I don't know if that was intentional. But if you look at it that deeply, because people be doing shit deeply just to uh, sound like they intellectual, that could make a little bit of sense. It could make a little bit of sense. I love how she started off the set. Where have you been all my life? I, 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 you know, because I was sitting there saying the exact same thing. Rihanna, girl, where you been all my life? Where you been? And y'all know, but as soon as we realized that she was spreading child, everybody, I, I'm telling you, everybody that's been waiting on the album collectively said, oh, we ain't finna get no album. So <laughs> we collectively said it, but we were still happy that she was out there doing her damn thing. I'm just saying, that was a good performance for me. Like diamonds in the sky. She sung all the jams. I am so happy she didn't sing this song, Lift Me Up. I'm telling you, dog, I don't care what y'all say. I dislike that fucking song to a T. There is nothing about that song that I like. Nothing. I cannot stand that Lift, lift Me Up song. And I, the only reason, in my opinion, that people like it like they do is because they keep relating that song to Chadwick Boseman's death. Because it was though out there for Black Panther movie and the Wakanda Forever movie. It was out there for that movie. And people are connecting that song to Chadwick Bozeman, who we love so dearly. That song sucks balls. It I can't stand that song. So maybe I'm not a Rihanna Stan. You know what? I am also a person that is able to if I have something to say about somebody that I love, I'ma fucking say it. If I feel that it was right or wrong, if I feel that I dislike it or don't like it, you know, like it or dislike it, I'ma fucking say it. I'm not finna be a kiss ass and just like say everything that they do is gold. No, that song is not. It got an award too. I think it got an NAACP Image Award. Oh, because the Chad with Boost. I'm telling you. I didn't like that song. I, every time it come on, I turn it off. I don't like that song. Well, anywho, I got 12 minutes to get to work. Okay, good, good, good. I should be able to get there on time, hopefully. I left kind of sort of on time today. It wasn't after 7.30 when I left my house. But I had to, get, you know, get a few orders together. You know, I got to get out to people. Um, The rest of the Super Bowl. This 
is the first Super Bowl that I have watched since 1999. I told y'all when Colin Kaepernick took that D, it'd be easy for me to not watch the game because I haven't watched in so many years. I actually like football. <laughs> I actually know the game. Um, even though I didn't have a young son growing up, I was the type of person that went through to every sporting event that my high school had, every sporting event that my daughter's high school had. I was there. I like sports. I like football. I like basketball. I cannot stand baseball, even though I'm from a baseball town, but St. Louis Cardinals. I'm from a baseball town. I still ride for the St. Louis Cardinals, but I hate watching that boring ass game. It is boring to watch live. Okay. Anywho. Um, but I like football. Why I stopped watching it is because I'm a jinx. <laughs> no matter what, if I watch, then why have we been sitting at this same light already for this damn long? I only got nine minutes to get to work now. I had 12 when I sat at the stop at this fucking light. God damn, these lights are long. Anywho, um, I'm a jinx. Okay. Anytime that I'm in a room. And I am rooting for a team on football. Pro ball. Just as only works with pro. They do not win. It has never failed. Especially Super Bowl wise. Like my family used to put me out the room when it was Super Bowl time. I was invited to the Super Bowl party. But I could not sit in the same room and watch the game. Because I was fucking jinx. And so I felt I was this way with this particular game too. And... I was first. I was surprised that Rihanna actually did Super Bowl, considering that she said she wouldn't ever do it unless Kaepernick approved or something like that. I, I thought that's what the situation was. I could be wrong. Maybe he approved. I don't know. Anywho, uh, <clears throat> so because of Rihanna, I think I end up watching the whole fucking game. Because one, you didn't know what time halftime was gonna start, and then after that, it was over. I didn't want to turn it off because the game was actually fucking good. The Philadelphia Eagles, they passing game was ridiculous. Super Bowl night. Oh my God. The Chiefs, every time that the the Chiefs was basically, I'll say, catching them. They was running, they was catching up to them. And they didn't have to go far. Every time the Eagles scored, the Chiefs scored. The Eagles scored, the Chiefs scored. That's how the game kept going back and forth. There was a couple calls that I didn't agree with. Um, however, the last and final call that they had, which allowed the, the Chiefs to win, I do think it was a right call. But they everybody's like, dude, we only had a 55 seconds left of the game. Why make that call? Why just let it play out? I still think that if they had not called... Uh, defensive holding that they the Chiefs still the Chiefs would have caught that ball and still would have made that, that play. So they still would have won. That's my personal opinion on that. But and because the Chiefs have been chasing every time that I, 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 chasing is not a good word. They responded. They answered. <laughs> Answer with a, a, a touchdown of their own. Most almost every time that happened, you know, the Eagles would get one. The Chiefs will get one. Eagles will get one. The Chiefs will get one. It just happens to be that the Chiefs got it, got it last at this particular time. That was a good fucking game. It, it, say it was a couple calls I didn't agree with, but those couple calls actually would not have changed the trajectory of the way that game was played. That was it, it was it's fast paced. The players play hard. It wasn't my turn to turn. Okay, I thought it was my turn to turn. Why the fuck you turning so kind of slow? I don't understand why people go two miles an hour around a fucking corner. <clears throat> so, yeah. And I was rooting on the Chiefs secretly. I couldn't say out loud who I was going for. And the only reason why I was rooting for the Chiefs is because I'm from Missouri. Okay, Kansas City represents my home state. I really didn't have no salt in the game because I hadn't watched the game since 1999. So I didn't have a team that I really like understood the players at this particular point, uh, who the players were. You know, I learned them as I watched on the field. That boy Bolden, bad. That boy Hurts, 
bad than the motherfucker, baby. Hurts was bad than the motherfucker, baby. Then they had the two brothers, uh, Celsi, is that Kelsey? They had the two brothers. The brother that was playing for the Chiefs was finer than the brother that was playing for the Eagles. So that's how I you know, made my decision to vote on the Chiefs. And, you know, the Chiefs pulled it out. Shit. My daughter was going for the Eagles because her friend told her to go for the Eagles. Like I said, we haven't watched the game in a long time. Um, so, uh, she's watched games since 19, uh, 1999. She wasn't born since 1998. But she's watched games since 1999. I haven't watched them. Because her and my mama, they diehard football fans, right? So, um, yeah, that game was exciting. That game was exciting. And they had some momentous moments in there. Shirley Ralph in the pregame sung Lift Every Voice. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but she said that was the first time since 1943 it had been sung in a public setting such as that. That's not That was wrong. Not since 1943. The first time in 143 years that it has been sung in a public setting such as that. Now, personally, this is what I had always said anyway. When they was having all this beef about the National Anthem, this, that, and the third, um, that whoever got caught out there to sing that was black should have just automatically started singing Lift Every Voice anyway. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. You know, that, this, I'm saying. Let our rejoicing rise. I don't know all the words. It's a verse. I don't. You know what? Every anthem song is out there. I only know the first verse. <laughs> Let me be honest. I only know the first verse, and I know our choral director taught us the whole doggone sound when I was in college. Not college, in high school. I know they taught us to the whole. They taught us the whole song in sixth grade. But I don't remember it all, child. I don't. But momentous moment for Shirley Ralph to start off in the pregame singing lift every voice you can probably find the pregame i think we had we turned the tv on around too so we caught a whole lot of what was going on um then babyface came out and did america the beautiful have they they didn't normally do america the beautiful at the football games i don't ever remember doing it if they did they did it in the pregame but babyface baby came out and did america the beautiful um no comparison but ray charles is still my favorite when it comes to singing that song He's still my favorite when it comes to singing that song. But Babyface came out there. He sang, child. You know Babyface can sing. He came out there and did the damn thing. I was like, okay. So by the time the game started, I was hyped up. Because who came out next? Chris motherfucking Stapleton. If y'all don't know country music, if you don't know soul music, get yourself together and listen to Chris Stapleton. Baby, Chris can sing. Oh, I, that man. If I had to talk about race, that's one white man's race music that I, 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 I get with. He is such a soulful person. Such a soulful person. And he sang the national anthem down. Fuck all the politics in that moment for me. Okay? I didn't stand. I still don't stand when the national anthem play. I don't take a knee, but I don't stand the fuck up. And yes, I'm a veteran and I still don't stand. When I was in the military, I didn't salute either if it was up to me. Like when I was in front of my like uh, NCOs and shit, you just called me salute. But when I was by myself and when the, the National Anthem played, we had to stop and salute and all that shit. I didn't. I didn't. Um, but anywho, I've, so I've always been this way. It was way before Kaepernick. But, especially because I listen to the fucking words. That's like, no, Amazing Grace. Can't stand that damn song either. <clears throat> Anywho, damn, I got two minutes to get down the street. Am I gonna make it? I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, Chris Stapleton sang that damn song down. It, uh, it actually, between him and Babyface, Babyface got me caught up. Babyface got me caught up. Between him and Babyface and Chris Stapleton, I, I was a little bit emotional. I was a little bit emotional. I was like, the whole time, child. The whole time. Now, 
I ain't gonna say a thug tear was finna fall. But it was wailing up. Cause the way he delivered that fucking song, the way he delivered it. Bellissimo. Bellissimo. Shit, some of the players did cry. Some of the players on the field, they was in tears. They had big, they had tears. Crocodile tears falling down. They got them face. You know what I'm saying? Chris Stapleton make you feel. And then who that that bitch Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene gonna come on Twitter and talk about how uh, Chris Stapleton singing a song was no everything. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm really paraphrasing. But she wished they would have kept all the other wokeness out of it. I mean, basically meaning the black people, you know, out of it. Shirley Ralph with Lift Every Voice and Babyface with American Beautiful. She wished they'd kept all that fucking wokeness out of it. Bitch, fuck you. Because one, Chris Stapleton is a damn good advocate. He is an advocate, an ally for Black Lives Matter and black people and uh, he's against all the injustice that the police have done and all the police brutality and all this, that third and all the inequality. Chris Faber speaks out against that shit. So you only supporting him because he white. That's basically what you're saying, Marjorie. Fuck her. I can't stand that bitch. Oh, I can't stand her. And then y'all y'all say I've been seeing. Did y'all see what the former president said? That motherfucker was never my president. That orange Cheeto bastard was never my motherfucking president. Dumb Donald? No. Nah. That dumb motherfucker gonna come on there and try to shade Rihanna. Talking about it was the worst performance in history of the Super Bowl. She was vulgar. Did that nothing. I'm, I'm quite sure that Shakira and J-Lo got there and shook their entire asses. Okay? I remember Shakira out there, they out there to the screen. You know what I'm saying? I remember Shakira did that. But what Rihanna did was too sexy and too vulgar. Bitch, please. You only mad at her because she won't let you use her fucking music in her campaign. And she posted up fuck Trump on her shit, which I agree with. You know, that's the only reason why you're mad, you saucy bitch. Woo! Yeah, he gonna go out there and post all that shit talking about what she did was big, this, that, other. It was the boring, it was the worst, it was lackluster, this, that, and other. Compared to last year, last year was all uh black performance too. What I thought so anyhow. And shit, Eminem took a knee. But yeah. <laughs> but he's like, uh, it's the most boring thing. The most boring one, the most boring one that I've seen in the last few years. Because even though I have not watched the game, I still have watched the halftime highlights just to see the performance. I can't even lie to you about that. Katy Perry. That was the worst. She was so boring. Oh my God, that was one of the worst Super Bowl performances ever. It it was what the fuck ever. Oh, that talk about boy. Who y'all think has been the worst Super Bowl performance? Like even when Beyonce and Bruno Mars came out there, I love me some Coldplay. Child, I forgot Coldplay even performed because that's how boring they was. I forgot that they had performed. They was out there with Beyonce and Bruno Mars. Coldplay came out. Did y'all remember that? They was that boring, and I love Coldplay's music. But they was boring. But Katy Perry, I like her music. Boring. As fuck. Boring. Just boring. But yeah, y'all put down in the comment section who y'all thought was the worst Super Bowl performance that you have seen. Who y'all thought is y'all most favorite? To me, hands down, my most favorite is still Prince. Not that I could, because I'm a Prince fan, but that motherfucker shut shit down. Prince, for me was one of the best Super Bowl performances for me. If I had a great who sung the best national anthem, I know y'all gonna give it to me in Houston. I give it to Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye was the best national anthem performance for me. Hands down. And I, I'm, I know y'all gonna hate me for saying this. I'm gonna have to move Chris Stapleton up there above Whitney for me. Uh, it just It just was. Hey, Chris Stapleton moved me more than Whitney did. I like Whitney. I'm just saying. I'm almost at work, child, and I'm late. God damn it. Three minutes late. By the time I get into the building, I'll be five minutes late. Whatever. Anyway, I need to get in here and get done. Get off so I can go pick my mom up from the airport. I will see y'all in another video. Thank y'all for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. See y'all in tonight's recap and review of Soul Ties. Peace. <laughs>